Hi everyone, this is Marcus with DTF Station, and in this video, we will go over how to operate the Prestige R2 DTF printer. At the beginning of the day, first, turn your printer on, turn your oven on, have your heat pressed heating up, and open Hosensoft on your computer. Now that everything is on, let's perform a nozzle check. Now press the menu button on the front control panel. Press the down arrow button until you get to head maintenance. Then press enter. Then press the down arrow key again until you get to head status. Then press enter. Note, you can also perform a nozzle check directly from the Hosensoft software and perform head cleanings for specific heads as well. This will print a nozzle check pattern for you on your media. If you see any breakages like we do here, head back to the control panel and press head clean to perform a head cleaning. Once the head cleaning is complete, go back to the menu system to head maintenance Head status and press enter to print another nozzle check pattern. If you're getting at least 90% of the nozzles firing, you are good to begin production. But let's go over some additional instructions before moving on. You can perform a nozzle check and head cleaning inside Hosensoft. To perform a nozzle check, click check. In the software, click here to select whether you want to clean both heads or select a single head for cleaning. You have options to clean all print heads, H1 head, or H2 head. Here you'll see the three options for cleaning, light, normal, and strong. If you have a heavy clog, perform a heavy cleaning. If you have a light clog, use a light cleaning. Before sending a job, always check the X margin. Use this ruler to decide where you want your X margin to be set to. For this example, we will set it to 2.5 cm, convert that appropriately, and in the X margin section, put 25 mm. Once inputted, make sure to hit save. Note, always perform a nozzle check first. If you run a head cleaning first, that may create bubbles creating inaccurate nozzle check patterns. Now, let's try sending a print. Open DG Rip. This is your cue. Now locate the artwork that you'd like to print and simply drag and drop it into the queue. Once the image is loaded, you can see where the edges of the media are and where the edges of your artwork are. As you can see, the artwork is larger than the media. You can change the width and the height dimensions down here and you can also rotate your image here. You can also click copies to create multiple duplicates on the template. Use these buttons to zoom in and also to zoom out to see a wider view of everything. You can type in the quantity of copies you'd like and in which direction you would like them laid out in these spaces. Refer to these icons to let you know in which direction those copies will be laid out. Once ready, click the print icon to send the job to the printer. Now that the print has been sent to the printer, let's head over to the control panel. This is the resume slash pause button. Use this to pause and resume your print at any time. This comes in handy if you run into any issues with your print and you'd like to pause it before wasting excess media. Some examples of issues you may run into are banding, which are horizontal lines that form due to nozzle cloggage. You can fix this by executing a cleaning, which you also have a button for on control panel. This can also be executed in your software. Another issue you can run into is if the media is lifting up, pulling, or if you are trying to cut the media, always pause the printing process. Any of these issues can cause a head strike, which is when the printhead makes contact with the media which can damage the printhead. You can also use the cancel button to completely cancel a job. To get back to the menu, press the right arrow key, and then press enter. The menu section is where you can find different options like fill ink, nozzle check, head cleaning, and more. When your printer is idle, you can use the up and down arrow keys to move the media in and out of the printer. The left and right arrow keys can be used to move the printer carriage. When the printer carriage is secured on the capping station, you can release it by pressing and holding the left arrow key. Continue holding the left arrow key if you would like to move the printer carriage all the way to the left for end of day maintenance. 
When docking the printer carriage back onto the capping station, never use the right arrow key. Instead, press the enter key to dock the printer carriage back on the capping station automatically. You may not fully dock the printer carriage if you use the right arrow key, which may result in your print head drying out overnight. Do not use the origin button, instead set your margins within the software as shown earlier in this video. All of these functions are also available on Hosensoft, but different terminology is used. Let's go over the differences in verbiage. Check in Hosensoft is the same as head status on the printer. Clean is cleaning, which you can also choose between weak normal and strong. Ahead is down. Left and right stay the same. Back is up. X reset is the same as enter. Load is fill ink, which you also have options to fill ink on all printheads, H1 printhead or H2 printhead. Now let's go over the printhead terminology. H1 is referring to the CMYK head. H2 is referring to the white printhead. Left head is referring to the CMYK head. Right head is referring to the white head. Now, let's let the printer finish printing the image that we sent earlier. Once the print has been completed, you can use the down arrow key to pull the media out far enough to get it ready to cut. Once in position, use your right hand to hold and slightly pull the media outward. While the media is taut, use your left hand to cut the media straight as possible. Make sure before the media is completely cut off, your right hand is ready to catch the media. If at any point you feel that you have creased the media, it is highly recommended to reload the media. For the first print, check the alignment of the white layer to the CMYK layer. If there is any misalignment, you may need to redo some of the printhead adjustment procedures. Take a look at the sample print. This is showing a misalignment between the two layers. You can clearly see that the CMYK layer is peeking out of the white layer. Note. You will know that this is a misalignment issue when the misalignment is happening only on one side. If you see a layer peeking out on both sides, that is a different issue. In that case, first, check the image quality to make sure that it's high resolution. If the image is high resolution, then heading into Hosensoft and increase the choke. For this, please refer to our how to adjust weight in video. Now, let's move on to adding hot melt powder to our print. Now, get some hot melt powder. Place the film on the tray with the ink side facing up. Note, we do recommend you placing the print into your oven for a quick one second before adding powder in order to remove excess humidity and static from the film. Now, pour some hot milk powder onto the film. Now, grab the film on each side with both hands and move the powder around, making sure that all the wet ink gets covered. The powder will stick onto all of the wet ink. This is also why it is important to make sure to powder your film no later than two hours after it has been printed. After two hours, the ink will have dried up too much for the powder to stick. Once the film has been fully powdered, shake off any excess powder. Next, flick the film with your finger to remove any remaining powder on the film. You can also use our Sizemo S20 shaker to make this process less messy. Now it's time to cure the film. To cure the film, we will be using the Phoenix Oven Air. Make sure to turn this oven on at least 10 minutes before heating any film, as it needs time to heat up. Note, do not turn the air purifier on while the oven is heating up, as this will extend the time the oven needs to heat up, since the air purifier will start to suck up the heat. Also, we recommend regularly replacing the HEPA and charcoal filter in the air purifier to ensure the safety of your environment. Please watch our Phoenix Oven Operation video for more details. You can also use a conveyor dryer or heat press to cure the film, but the temperature of the curing is very important. If the film is cured at a temperature that is too low, it will cause issues with the print. The minimum temperature required to cure the powder is 120 degrees Celsius or 248 degrees Fahrenheit. Press this button to change any settings as needed. You may need to change the settings depending on your environment. Humidity, temperature, and elevation of your environment can affect the curing process. In this example, we will be curing at 257 degrees Fahrenheit or 125 degrees Celsius. Please watch our temperature instruction video. We will be curing the film for 60 seconds, but again, this may vary depending on your environment. Place the film in the center of the curing bed. Press this button to start the timer. It will beep in 60 seconds. 
Once the oven starts to beep, press this button again to stop the alarm. Disclaimer, the bottom platen will get extremely hot, so always use heat-resistant gloves when removing the film. Inspect the film. It's difficult to show this in the video, but the powder should have fully melted and should have a finish similar to an orange peel. If the powder is grainy at all, you should cure the film for longer or increase the temperature. When your film has been properly cured, make sure to cut both the top and bottom horizontal lines. You can use a cutting board or a pizza cutter to cut the horizontal lines off and create a straighter edge. If you won't be pressing the film immediately after, you can store the film for up to six months. When storing the film, store it in a dry, dehumidified location, and we recommend placing desiccant or paper towels on the film to absorb any moisture. Also, avoid high heat and sunlight. Now we will prepare to press the film onto the garment. Make sure to have your heat press powered on and heating up for at least 10 minutes before this step. Our recommended settings for the heat press are 320 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds with medium pressure. If you are using a non-Prisma series heat press, please use a temperature gun to ensure that the heating element is heating up to the desired temperature evenly across the panel. Proper heat application is extremely important for the print to be durable and the film to peel off easily. If you press too hard, you may experience ink evaporation on the white inks. Medium pressure is recommended, especially on black garments or non-cotton garments. Once the heat press reaches the correct temperature, place the garment on the platen. We recommend pre-pressing for about 5 to 8 seconds to remove any wrinkles and moisture. Our universal films can be peeled hot, warm, or cold, but due to some variables, we normally recommend either warm or cold peeling our films. Under the correct settings, you may hot peel as well. To hot peel, wait 3 seconds after pressing and slowly peel the film in a rolling motion. If you see any issues such as the print peeling off, stop and press with increased heat for a little bit more pressure. You can also use a garment to rub the edge of the transfer to cool off the edge before peeling. To warm peel, after pressing, move the garment off the heat press and then slowly peel the film off. To cold peel, after pressing, wait for the film to completely cool off and then peel. This will give you the most vibrant finish. If your fabric keeps getting stuck to the film, you will need to adjust your settings. Make sure to test your settings multiple times before selling your transfers. Now that the film has been peeled, you may notice a glossy finish on the print. To give the print a nice matte finish, place either a garment or silicone treated paper, not Teflon, on top of the print and press for an additional 5 to 8 seconds. If you press with another garment on top, this will remove the glossiness but also give a nice hand feel, also known as garment weave stamping, and absorb any oily residue from the ink. Alright, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.